Dan Perry here with another C++ tutorial for Dan on Tech. In this video we will look at programming structures. So far as all the examples we've been doing, we have been doing a sequence structure where one command is executed immediately after the other. And that sequence is linear. Well, there are other structures that allow us a lot of power in programming. There are decision type structures. And with the decision type uh, structures, we have, at some point, we ask a question. And depending on the question, we branch and do one of two or more things. Well, in the simplest form, if there's a true, or if that question is true, we go and execute a sequence of commands. If it's false, we just skip to the commands after that uh, series of, of true commands, or those commands we need to do when it's true. We have a more complex version of that where we ask the question, and if it's true, we do one sequence, and if it's false, we do another sequence, and then they continue on afterwards. I'm not sure. I just hit to the wrong screen. So those are a couple of our structures. <clears throat> we can even, with our decision, go even more where we ask a question. And based on the results, results of that question, we could do one of a number, in this case four, or however many different commands as we need. Now, this type of decision structure where it's one of two things or, not, uh, or we jump out of it, this will be an if structure or an if command that we'll use for that one and for this type structure it's the select or case command. You'll, I will see and hear people talk about case structures or select structures. Both are the same. What it is is both of these keywords are used in the structure and somebody, some people use one rather than the other. After we look at that, then we'll look at the uh, iterative type structures. And these, my writing's not working well. And I, I'm not sure I even spelled that one right. The way my writing started working, I think I messed it up, but that's okay. Those are our looping structures. And with the looping structure, <clears throat> we have three basic kinds of looping structure. We have one where we go a fixed number of times, where we go and we have some sort of a counter. And we basically go through and repeat one or more commands over and over again until we go that number of times. <clears throat> we then have another looping structure that we ask a question at the beginning of the loop. If it is true, we go and execute the commands in the loop and then come back to the top of the loop. If it's false, we exit out of the loop. And a third type where we go and we exit, or execute rather, all the commands in the loop, then we ask a question. And if the results are true, we go back and repeat the loop. If they're false, we exit out of the loop. <clears throat> the first of those will use a four loop structure for, or for command for. The second type is a while, and we'll do examples of all of these. And the third type is a do while. 
So those are the different sequencing and structure structures we will build from. There are some additional looping commands that have been added to C++ 11. Those would not be used that commonly. They, they're fairly specific in purpose. <clears throat> but with these five commands, we can control the execution of our program. We can repeat execution. We can make decisions on how the program executes and what happens in it uh, very readily. So those are the commands we're going to start looking at, and we're going to begin with that if structure in the next movie. Thank you for watching this Dan on Tech video. Please subscribe to this playlist so you don't miss any future videos. Please check out and subscribe to our other Dan on Tech channel playlists.